Welcome to the Waterboy and Equipment Manager podcast. My I'm name Kate is Safe. Sure on you. My name is Safe Basari, and today is the start of a brand new podcast series that we're going to do from time to time here on the Waterboy and Equipment Manager podcast. It's going to be called the Shoot the Shit series. And what we're going to do here is we're going to sit with people that are fans or experts or somewhere in between and talk about a deep dive basically into a specific theme. Today's theme is the late great Kobe Bryant. And joining us today are friends of mine, friends of the show, and as you can imagine, Kobe absolute fanatics. I mean, introduce yourself, man. Uh, I mean, so uh, I my day gig is I'm a executive director at a nonprofit to help uh, entrepreneurs get connected capital. But diehard Kobe fan, uh, love the love the opportunity to be able to be on the show. Uh, so excited to get this started. Well, how's your mom? Engineer, just like every other brown boy. <laughs> but uh, besides that, big Kobe fanatic, big Laker fanatic. Um, you know, wish his family the best and sad to lose a legend. Um, look forward to talking to, about him. Yeah, I'm your mother, Lily, uh, at Captain America on Instagram. Uh, I'm a recruiter slash personal trainer. Yeah, and obviously my name is Safe Basaria. And I'm Case Charania. Yeah. And you guys are kind of used to us at this point. Now, like I said, we're going to do a deep dive on Kobe. And the reason why we're doing this around this time is by the time you guys are listening to this, it will mark six months since the legend has left us. And, uh, and yeah, it's been a crazy six months, not just because Kobe's gone, the world has kind of overturned itself in the meantime, but it doesn't make it any easier not having the legend himself here with us. I'm sure he'd have some shit for us to kind of get by. All sure. right, before we get started, I just want to let you know to that one homie we have in Ireland, I forgot to shout you out this last spot, but we love you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we really fuck with Ireland here on the Waterboy Equipment Manager Podcast. Nice, nice, nice. They fuck with us, so we fuck with them. Hey, it's kind of Ireland cool. now, so what's up? Yeah, Respect. man. Like we go, we go like global, that. boys. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Ireland, Norway, and Germany, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. Now, yeah. in order to start the podcast on the right note, I think it's only fair for you to almost qualify yourself. So let's kind of go around mm-hmm. and talk about when you started following the Lakers, and specifically Kobe, and kind of why. Let's start about the story behind it. Um, and I, yeah, I mean, let me throw it to you, man. You yeah, man, absolutely. So um, I got a, a weird story. You know, I, I wasn't a Kobe fan to begin with. Mm-hmm. It started off with actually Tracy McGrady. He was my go-to basketball player. I got introduced to basketball uh, when when Tracy McGrady started with the, the Magic in 2001 or 2000, 2000, 2001. And, you know, watched this game, crazy ball player. And I think I saw their first matchup when... Uh, when Kobe and uh, the Magic played, and man, they went at each other. And at that time, I was having some doubts. You know, I'm, 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 I was a Tracy fan, and then when I saw Kobe play, it just was a different instinct about. It. You know, you felt it already when you watch it, right? As soon as he gets on the court, you get that vibe that he wants to ball out. He's ready to ball out and ready to show up against anybody else. So that first game, I believe it was 2001, sometime when uh, when Kobe played against uh, Tracy McGrady and the Magic, and that time when I saw that game and and how you know how he balled out and uh, his cl- you know just just his just his uh, his epicenter on the team was I thought was amazing so that was my first time when I fell in love with the guy so been balling with uh, you know just his story and everything since then so it's been pretty nice bro it's crazy I'm about to feel so old when I say <laughs> this but I've been following Kobe since 1998. Okay. So I was like eight years old. So ironically, Kobe number convenient, eight. Convenient, convenient. Yeah. Grandpa, his sweater here. <laughs> <laughs> Golden Club, man. Golden Club. But uh, yeah, no, for real, man. Uh, I remember having an N64, and I got the game courtside with Kobe Bryant. Okay. And just oh, playing nice. that game, like I mean, I really didn't watch the NBA outside of Michael Jordan, really, um, and really just playing the game, I got addicted. And then uh, you know, you watch Kazam with Shaq, you know, because growing up, the Disney movies and stuff like that yeah. were big, and. You watch Shaq. And you, didn't, you didn't know better. You didn't know the movie is horseshit. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, of course, yeah. obviously. Like, who has classic? Okay, Damn. Who Damn. Has not, good... not every classic is good. You're right, sure. <laughs> yeah. Who has good taste yeah. at like ten? Come of on. course, that's what Come I'm saying. On. You're you're excused now. You know better. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Right? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So ten, ten year old mirrors. <laughs> totally sure. off the board. For sure. So after the N64 days and all that, and then you get into the actual athlete in and of himself. So Froby, you know, number mm-hmm. eight. Of course, uh, of that. That whole generation, that whole time, and then, you know, getting to see him in Atlanta at the All-Star Game in 2001, I mean, ever since then, I've just been hooked. Yeah. So, for me, I was always a big Kevin Garnett fan to start off with, actually. Interesting. So, yeah. it's just the thing. I play big on the court, you know, I'm a big center kind of oriented guy, yeah. power forward type. Uh, so, Kevin Garnett was my go-to guy, but I didn't like the Timberwolves specifically, right? That's fair. So Kevin Garnett didn't either. It's all good. Same <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. tenacity. You know, like, he's trying to buy them. Uh, he yeah. didn't like them then. He definitely doesn't like them yeah, now. Right, exactly. He took the big ticket out of there. He did. He, 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 good move on his part. <laughs> you know, I think uh, just seeing those two guys and how like 
fierce they are as competitors. That's what really got me into it. And then the kind of like moving away from it, it's not that I didn't like the Lakers, I just wasn't fully sold on, sold on them yet. Um, I moved to America, we didn't really know about basketball in Pakistan, right? Sure. So like slowly learning the game and everything like that, my cousins in Texas, Huge Spurs fans, like oh, yeah. diehard okay. Spurs okay. fans, right? Yeah, it's a good time so, to be a Spurs fan in the exactly. late 90s, early 2000s. Exactly. Best time, actually. The trio, right? Of and then course. you had Robinson on there, you know, playing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So good at times, man. Very good times. Shit. Cheering up right now. <laughs> <laughs> and nostalgia. Don't worry, we'll, we'll get there later. We'll get there later. Don't, Don't worry. worry. But um, so my, my cousins all love the Spurs. My brother and I, we loved the Lakers, you know, just so we had like a rivalry going. And man, that rivalry extended beyond just like, you know, the Spurs and the Lakers, it got like, we got heated with each other. Like we got into fist fights with each other over this shit. <laughs> so that's when, you know, like the, the bond just kind of came together. And obviously you have Kobe, like the younger guy, you know, you have Shaq kind of who's older, who's kind of a little bit further in age away from me. And you see Kobe's work ethic and how fierce he is. Yep. He's just like cutthroat attitude, you know? So really adopting that attitude and seeing like, this is the guy I kind of want to like emulate in life. And then the, the game just like came along naturally with that. So yeah, I've been, Probably say I, like 2001, 2002. So, so. You know, it just happened to be championships year, so it worked out. <laughs> yeah. it worked, yeah. That's a pretty I'm not a bandwagon, though. I'm not a bandwagon. <laughs> well, look, 20 years at some point you shed the bandwagon, exactly. you know, name. We've yeah, been yeah. pretty, the Lakers were shit for a good exactly. little bit there, about five years. Mm-hmm. You stuck so, around. Yeah. I think that's a pretty good qualification of you're a real fan, at, at least at this point, yeah, right? Yeah. Okay, do you want to jump in before I get here? I mean, I'm going to steal yours, so why don't you go ahead and kick it off? Okay, fair. So, the same moment. Oh, did we? Yeah. So, so for me, the reason why I'm a Laker fan is my dad immigrated from Pakistan in 19, I believe it was 82 or 83. And obviously I was not born that early on. I'm not a grandfather like some of you guys on the pod. But, um, but he, he lived, he immigrated and he moved directly to LA. That was his first spot in America. He lived there for about eight, nine years. Then he got married to my mom Then they had me. And so he's the reason why I grew up a Laker fan. It was the only best. My dad wasn't a big sports guy growing up. He, he would watch them if they're on, but it wasn't something we'd go out of our way to do. Mm-hmm. But the Lakers were the one exception. They'd play, we'd stay up, we'd watch games, and, and truly, I think my genuine first, and, and honestly, it's such a famous play, it's such a famous moment, that you, your mind could almost trick yourself into believing this is your first memory of Lakers, but for me, that Shaq to Kobe Lob in the Western Classic. Conference Finals against Portland in the year 2000, Classic. that I believe to be is my first Laker Kobe oh, yeah. Shaq memory. Mm-hmm. I was, what, uh, I believe six years old at the time, or around there, and, uh, and so since then, Kobe, Shaq, the Lakers... And everything that has followed has been kind of a part of me as it has been a part of you guys. Yeah. Okay, do you want to get in now? I mean, honestly, Shaq's face after that dunk is oh, kind of course. what makes it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Shaq YouTube faces. will get it. Yeah, Shaq you'll get it, you'll get it. But yeah, I mean, that lob and then just the whole winning the three-peat. I was already a Raiders fan at the time. Mm-hmm. So it just made sense to pick the Lakers and no one else. And I get a lot of shit for being a Lakers fan. I think we all do. We all do. Yeah, we all do. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. All do. Yes. I mean, literally, Wahaj at one point earlier had to say, not a bandwagon. Yeah. He had to throw that shit out there. Look, when you're one of the most famous, popular sports clubs in the world, yeah. not just in basketball, in the world, you find yourself defending yourself a little bit. Yep. I yeah. think it's kind oh, of built absolutely. into the absolutely. to the resume. Yeah. There, there are certain franchises. You know, you have your Real Madrid, the Yankees, the Lakers, the Celtics. I mean... It, it just comes with it, man. Oh, you just understand that you're going to catch flack, but shit happens. When you win a lot, then you can shut them up. Absolutely. So let's move on kind of to, we, we agree we're all Laker fans. We're big Laker fans. We're big Kobe fans, which is why we're here. What are your favorite Laker, not Laker, Kobe moments or memories that you have and you hold dear, you know, near and dear to yourself? And you take it away, oh, my guy. Perfect, <clears throat> actually. Uh, I mean, I think for me that, you know, fifth ring by far yeah. is obviously the biggest moment, right? <laughs> yeah. I've never seen a series go so perfect. And it, like, I, I'm a big you know, writer, I write a lot of poems. That to me was poetry in a completely different format, you know? Mm-hmm. It's, it's a huge struggle. You have Kobe who is, I mean like beaten, injured, you know? He he's, has that loss in his mind. Like last time we played the Celtics in finals, we lost, you know? And we have all these challenges to come like overcome. But you see a man on a mission. Like that's how I always felt Kobe was. You know, you have this leader and through all ends, he will get you to that chip, no matter what it takes, right? So for me, that game seven moment when he jumps up onto the announcer's table, right? And he like spreads his arms out wide, got the ball in his left hand, hat on, I was like, this is vindication for like, as if like my life depended on it. <laughs> like like yeah. that's how deep it was. But like, that's what Kobe did though. Exactly, yeah. right? He made us so damn invested like, in him. All yeah. the way down to like, Vujicic like shooting those last two free throws, I was mm-hmm. like, bro, please like, 
for Kobe. Just like, don't mess this up. You know? <laughs> like I need, I need to see him win. It's like I'm winning. You know. Absolutely. And so I don't know that moment. I think like, almost like I became a man. You know, I finally became a man. Even though I went through like puberty at like ten, that was, like, that was the moment. Yeah. That, that was that. Plus, one of the best post game sound bites that you'll ever hear in your life with Ron Artest says, "Kobe passed me the ball." I can't believe Kobe passed me the ball. Me the ball. Me the ball. He was so excited about it, and ironically, that's my favorite moment as well. Uh, just the redemption story, man. I mean, you can't write that stuff, right? Lakers and Celtics, like. The second that you decide that you're going to be a fan of the purple and gold, you decide that you're going to hate the green and white. Oh, it comes, in, it comes yeah. in the, you know, the contract. Yeah, yeah. Right. Absolutely. 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 Yeah. It's bolded. Yeah. yeah. Underlined it. Yes. I think, I think so. it's the only line in the contract. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like, we I'm a Laker so fan and fuck the Celtics. Right, right, right. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So for them to come back, you know, like they didn't have Bynum, which I believe truly made all the difference because KG was just able to bully the hell out of Paul Gasol, exactly. let's just be honest, right? Yeah. Yeah. So to come back... But my man got that and one play, though. He did. He got he did. that and one play. Back <laughs> he, came he came back strong. He came back strong. And, you know, that, that was so great. You know, even Kobe himself has said that that was the sweetest championship. It was the hardest one for him to get. Not only did he have to go back and, you know, get his first ring after Shaq, but then to also have that hanging over his head that he couldn't beat the Celtics. Right. And then to yeah. come back and do that, too. Could he do it like, again. Could yeah. he do it again, at least. You back know? to back. Without yeah. like, such a big, dominant center to help him out, right? That was the biggest thing as well. Yeah. All right, so y'all picked the playoff win. So I'm going to go with an interview I saw with Pau Gasol. He said after one game, they were flying, I think, to Miami. And Pau Gasol just saw Kobe with a piece of paper with a bunch of sets from the paint written down. And he asked him what he was doing. He's like, so pretty much I look at it, and I think if I do this, defense looks this way, you'll be open this way. And then he's like, if I come here, then they're going to move this way. You have to come around that way. And I think just that dedication and attention to detail is what makes Kobe so fucking awesome. So it's the fifth ring for everybody? Does that yeah. Yeah. So I mean, and that's why I was like, yeah. I'm going to pick the fifth ring as well. Are you also I'm picking, picking the fifth ring? The only thing that I would add is what, you know, what Amber just said is that it, it's, it's after Shaq, right? Is that after Shaq, when he left, he gets that ring with Miami, and then you come back, and then you get two back-to-back rings. I mean, that's his vindication, right? Yeah. He, you, he needed that, and he proved it, and that's what that mindset is, is that he knew that he needed to get it, and he put himself in that position to get it. So I thought that was just the beauty of it all because that fifth ring just makes, you know, just that was that's the ring, right? I mean, that's what Kobe does best, right? Like, he, he ties that bow yeah. like it's nothing else. Like yeah, absolutely. Like, the ball of it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah. People count him out. People say he's not the best. LeBron's the best, blah, blah, blah. All these talks. He's too injured. He's too old. All this stuff. Doesn't matter. I'm coming. I already see the vision, you know? And I'm going to execute no matter what anyone says. That's crazy. That's well, so look, the, the, the best crazy. thing here is that Kobe, like Honor talked about, Kobe <laughs> talks about that fifth ring as the most memorable, meaningful one that he yeah. won. And like true Kobe fans, all of us picked the fucking man. The fifth, yeah. the fifth right? ring, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, look, if, if, if you need no, no other proof, it's right here. It's right here. That was Kobe so said it, we yeah. bought it, we're like, fuck it, we're going with yeah. it. Yeah, now so then, yeah. so yeah. let's kind of hurt. change direction to go favorite Kobe shot. Shot? Do you have a favorite shot? Now, I'll oh. start it off. Mine is 2006 versus the Suns, overtime, <clears throat> over the outstretched hands of Roger Bell and Boris Diaw. Jump ball, Kobe recovers. To the right elbow, pull up, bang. and you hear bang, and Kobe does it. Kobe right. does what he does. The myth, the myth of Kobe is just furthered. It's born. It's furthered, and that is personally my favorite shot in his entire career. All right, that that's moment. our resident Steve Nash stand that hurt. I know. I'm sorry. Yeah. I didn't oh, do this, it. Look, if it makes you hurt more too. Yeah, I was like, if it makes you feel any better, I didn't do it to fuck with you. It's yeah, genuinely yeah. my favorite moment. But bro, the afterwards, the, oh, the, the jersey oh, pool. Oh, of course, it's iconic. iconic. Absolutely iconic. iconic. Absolutely. Absolutely. Does anyone else have a favorite shot they want to talk yeah, about? Yeah, for sure. I mean, for me, the buzzer beater from three point over Dwayne Wade off the ah, off yeah, the yeah. Backboard. Oh, classic. Bro, I was watching that at Nancy's with like a couple of my best friends, and I mean, I have never hugged a man like that in my life. <laughs> like yeah. seriously, like I I like pounced into his arms. Yeah. Seriously, like one hundred percent at my heaviest. Like, <laughs> back. To be fair, but, his yeah. cane also did like fall away from him, so that's why he got yeah, <laughs> exactly. The old man thing that happened. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. But that, but that shot, man, like it will forever be like my favorite Kobe. Like it just was amazing. Yeah, absolutely. I had the. Um, it, it's not really. So it was the. It was him at the free throw line after he tore his Achilles. You know, okay. I think that was. And it, after the so fact, after we know the story about it, that kind of thing. Just what you just said, like what's my favorite? You know, shot that really like touched me. So that was kind of I think. Um, you know, it just shows the the charisma that the man has, but also the pride and also the determination of like really just getting shit done, right? So um, that just goes down for me for sure as one of my favorite things I've seen Kobe just when he touches the ball, hits in the hoop, but again, does it with the torn Achilles. You almost think he's like 
playing with it, right? Like, they, there's some sort of magic in Kobe. Oh, of course. You know, it's where the ball oh, yeah, wills, like, whatever you say, Kobe Bryant, I'll get it done for you. you know? Absolutely. Like, for me, that was probably, like, I think it was game four versus the Suns in the playoff series where he hits, like, a super contested three-pointer and then gives Alvin Gentry that little pat on the pat on the butt, <laughs> you know? Yep. He's like, just to remind you of who I am, you know? Just a reminder. And I was like... Bro, you got to be kidding me. What can this man not do is True. the question now. True. You know? True. Like, you, this True. man, it doesn't matter where he's pulling up from. Yeah, I'm putting all my money on it. I guarantee somehow it's going to go. You in. don't bet against yeah. Kobe. No, no you don't bet against Kobe. Against Kobe. And, and a lot of guys learn the hard way. Yeah, a lot yeah. of guys learn the hard way. Case, do you want to share a shot? Mine's got to be probably the last shot he made. That free throw to hit 60 against the Jazz. Oh, yeah. Beautiful yeah. moment. And then after the game, Shaq's like, I told him to go get 50, this motherfucker got (laughs) 60. Yeah, yeah, it's very Kobe. So with Kobe comes a very familiar concept with basically every human that's ever lived, Mamba mentality. And the definition of Mamba mentality is a constant quest to be the best version of oneself. What does that mean to you guys, and how do you try to implement Mamba mentality and the Kobe philosophy into yourselves and your daily lives? I think the biggest thing is that Kobe, we saw Kobe's Mamba mentality on the court, right? But then when he left the court, he carried that to every single facet of his being, right? Whether it was being a great dad or even a, a piano player. player. Literally, I was a Moonlight Sonata. Oh, he literally just learned it. I don't know, and he doesn't even play piano like that. You know, that's such yeah. a hard piece to cover. Then he goes and excels in, uh, you know, like making Oscar. films and everything. He won an Oscar. Oscar. Like, that's the highest, like, honor that you can achieve in that. So I think for me, it's knowing that one mob of mentality doesn't have to be limited to just like one aspect of your life. That aspect can evolve. That, that same skill set can be changed and taken to other like facets of your life. So I know for me, it's always been, you know, like, how do I excel not only in my career, but as a human myself? Like, what are those things that, you know, how he analyzes game footage, I analyze like my habits, you know, my behaviors. Is this really contributing to like a positive growth? Or is it just kind of holding me back? Am I still doing the same things that... You know, someone who would be childish at my age. So making sure that I analyze my own being, you know, making sure that I'm improving on a day-to-day basis, if not yearly, right? Whether that comes with money or, you know, the company I keep around me, whether that's religion, family, whatever it is, you know, it's making sure that I give that full 100% focus and I understand that it's at all costs. Like, you've got to be committed to it. Otherwise, you don't really want it, right? It was, for Kobe, it was championship or nothing. Doesn't care if he made it, you know, first seed, doesn't care if it's just the semifinals or the conference finals. It's chip or nothing. You know, now, now we were just two points away from winning it. It's we won it or we didn't win it. It's that binary. It's that simple. Exactly. It's just that simple. And he helped you define it with what he did, right? So you yeah. know what mama mentality is. It's not something just like you, you, you define it, but he showed you what that definition exactly. was, right? He took it step by step. He said, look, this is the shit you got to do to have this yeah. mentality, right? It's something that, again, it's like the mama when that shit bites you. It's in you, and you know that you have to spread it on. It's your actions that prove it too. So that's one of the things that I think with mama mentality is that it, it wasn't it wasn't just one of the things that he just said, and it wasn't an attribute. It wasn't like this ultra ego that he had inside him. He actually showed that hey, look, I'm defining this right. Determination is one thing, but mama mentality is another right. thing. So it just goes in so deep, and I love that you can apply it to just about anything, right? So that shit was hard coded in his DNA, you know? Absolutely, yeah, hard coded. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. He always said, "I will outwork every motherfucker out that there is." You know, no, I, mean, yeah. I want to edit that, right? Like yeah. the thing about Kobe was it wasn't in his DNA; it was applied to him by himself. By right? himself, DNA he implies it, yeah. that he was born with it. Mm-hmm. Yes, he was born with God-given talent and skill and mm-hmm. shit, true, true. Mm-hmm. but he is one of, if not the hardest worker in NBA history. And not only like, well, Hodge, you said, and me and you've said so far, not just on the court, but he proved it in every facet of life that he attempted to be not just a filmmaker, but the best filmmaker yeah, in yeah. a certain category. He didn't just write a book. He wrote a fucking New York best-selling book, kids' book, right? So like, it wasn't just about basketball. It was, if you're going to do it, you do it 100% or you don't fucking do it at all. Exactly. Yeah. You yeah. don't waste your goddamn time. Exactly. Unless you do it, you do it right. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah, and see, for me, like that completely changed my life. You know what I mean? Like, <clears throat> for me, uh, a few years ago, um, you know, I was like 330 pounds. You know what I mean? Like, and Kobe has always been like my end all be all. Like his work ethic, like he's just always been different. Like you just never bet against him. He's got the ice in his veins, all that stuff. Um, but just the mama mentality of like being the hardest worker in any room that you go into. And I just remember. You know, when I was going along my fitness journey, like watching those videos about Kobe being in the gym at 4.30, 
you know, coming back at nine o'clock, getting in all those shots, and then coming back and coming back and coming back. And just talking about the time that he would get back from outworking these people and the time that he would put in, right? Yep. And those are like moments that you don't get back, right? So for example, if your like opponent wakes up at seven o'clock every day and you're working and you're waking up at four o'clock every day, you got three hours a day on your opponent right. that you can out train. Did you read my notes? So, no. It's literally <laughs> word for word. Literally I wrote outwork everyone. Oh, no, someone, it says it's going so, that right way. Right here it says I know someone, someone does like twenty twenty vision. No joke, yeah. it says someone in the gym at six AM shooting, I wanna be drenched Look, in sweat by the time he comes in. Those may be your notes. Lord, this has been my life. Fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I live this shit. Hey, man. You know that's, what I mean? That's, that's, so. that's quite literally the point of mom mentality. Yeah, it's absolutely. not just talk it. Live it. Live it. Work it. Yeah. And I feel like every PR, you know, like, you, you're so worried about it. I, I asked myself before, this is, like, before he even passed, I'm talking, like, college times, right? You, I look at the bar, I'd be like, what would Kobe do? And he's like, he'd get under that motherfucker. He'd squat that shit no matter what happens yeah. in life, you know? Yeah. Whether you're sick, you're tired, whatever it is, life's coming at you. You got to get through the drill. Yeah. That's all it is. Put in the work, the results will come afterwards. Yeah. Feelings, emotions, Kobe never worried about that. He never worried about the voices outside. Mm-hmm. He was like, let's get down to brass tacks, let's work it, and the results will come. Yeah. It's funny yeah. that you yeah. say the, the voices outside. You guys remember that? Uh, there was a commercial, right? Towards the end of his career where he was in a gym and he was shooting, playing a game, and then people started saying like, I've been hating you, right? And then for too long, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, yeah, so all these yeah, guys, are, and Kobe's just listening like, dude, yeah. this is my symphony. Exactly. This, none of this means yeah. anything. It means nothing to me. And it's not always about working harder. It's also about working smarter. Absolutely. There's absolutely. moments you've seen where Kobe talks about how he learned his signature turnaround baseline fadeaway. He went and studied how flamingos balance and then developed around that. Just absolutely insane. Yeah, it is insane. <laughs> it I, I is. Kinda, yeah, it is. Yeah. Like, it's crazy. It's absolutely ballet crazy. Just for footwork. You yeah. know, that, that's... Like, who does that? What player is thinking like what that? What human thinks like what that? Forget basketball. That, yeah. What human thinks that? Exactly. I know truly only it's the like great picking ones. out things from every... Like, find the good in every single thing that there is and bring it into his craft. It's like, no, I'm going to integrate it perfectly, you know? So that that's amazing. That's a next level type of mentality that I, a lot of people don't know. If they're not Kobe fans, you know, you can't really put yourself into that mindset, yeah. right? Yeah. But, so I mean, Amir, you, you. I mean, a lot of people maybe are listening to the podcast, mm-hmm. maybe don't know you and your journey. And mm-hmm. so you alluded to it. Can you kind of explain to the listeners that don't know you yeah. what you're referring to, just really quickly? Yeah. So uh, you know, in 2017, I was like 330 pounds. Uh, you know, just not happy with myself, my habits, all that stuff. Grew up playing sports and all that stuff. And next thing you know, I'm like this unrecognizable person. Um, and I just kind of have a moment where I'm like, okay, I don't care what it's going to take. I'm going to change this shit. And I mean, I literally looked at every Kobe workout video, <laughs> every course, Kobe quote, did. everything like that. And, you know, um, luckily I was able to, you know, apply the mama mentality, the uh, work ethic. And I lost 130 pounds, you know, and like it, like when I say it completely changed my life, you know, they talk about being the best version of yourself. Like there's so much accountability. You talk about like what was inside of him all along versus, you know, what did he work towards? Yep. Like a lot of people don't understand and they underestimate themselves. The thing about Kobe is he never underestimated himself. He always bet on himself. Before anybody else did, people forget. There was a time when Kobe's rookie year, I believe he had three air balls in a row. Mm-hmm. Yep. And people were like, who the hell is this arrogant kid yeah, who's, who's kid taking these final back shots? To back right? to back. Yeah. Right, but yeah. imagine the cojones as a rookie, an 18-year-old rookie, yeah. right, to be able to just say, you know what, fuck it. I'm open, shoot or shoot. Shoot right, shoot, shoot yeah. or shoot, right, and and that's the thing. And then to go from that to where like now every single time you do like a, a fade away or a last second shot, you scream Kobe. Dude, right? you're just throwing paper into the trash can. Kobe. Yeah, the, the simplest little thing, right? Yeah. So and it's crazy how just an NBA uh, superstar can really just change your entire life. I mean, even though he never necessarily set out to do that, but that's how inspiration works, right? You can literally come in any. Uh, fashion. I mean, to be quite honest, none of us, I don't know, he's correct me if I'm wrong, none of us have actually met the guy, talked with the guy, had the opportunity to do that while he was around, and yet the influence that he dictates, not just on our lives here on this podcast, literally tens if not hundreds of millions of people across planet Earth, not anybody can do that. Very few in human history have been able to accomplish what Kobe has done for us, and like I said, many people across planet Mm -hmm. Earth, so it's incredible, and I, I can see the emotion. I feel it too. And so let's jump to our favorite Kobeism, our favorite Kobe quotes. Share your favorite quote with us and the listeners, and, and let's explain why this is your favorite quote. What the hell does it mean to you personally? Right? It doesn't have to be perfect, it doesn't have to be right, but what is your favorite quote and why? 
Um, the one that I liked was the um, the one where he says like, "Don't compare me to Michael Jordan. Uh, oh, I want to be the next." Was it was that the only Kobe yeah. Bryant? I don't want to be the next Michael Jordan. Jordan. I, I just want to be Kobe, Kobe Bryant. Bryant. That one because again, you just right. kind of say that, that hey, look. Ups. That, that mama mentality. Is that was how you're back up? Hey, that was hey, my a, first choice. It's a, hey, it, it's a solid quote. And, 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 and uh, the reason why I love that one so much is because, uh, again, it speaks to the, the volumes of the, the character that he is, right? Is that he's like, he's like fuck it, man. I'm going to make my own my own trail and my own pathway of who I am as a person. Yeah. Like, hey, don't compare me. And that's what you, you do as an individual, your journey. You compare you to yourself, right? Mm-hmm. And the thing is that's how you pave yourself along the way is that, Fuck everybody else, right? Yeah, and, yeah, yeah like you know, I'm, that's fine. Yeah. I judge my own sense and my work ethic will prove who I am. Right at the end of the day, I will go down to history as like, hey, Kobe, and he did that, right? Yeah. So, and I don't know how when he said that or how early it was in his career that he may have said that, but I mean, he's really proven it, right? I mean, that, look, he proved from day one he had the cojones to say shit like that. So yeah, I don't think yeah, he had a problem it probably was early. Yeah, probably was early. Yeah, yeah. He always he always looked at it as like, I just gotta beat. The version that I was yesterday. Yeah, that was yesterday. Yeah, I, don't I gotta beat me from yesterday. Yeah, exactly. What Kareem exactly. did, what Michael, uh, what uh, Magic did, doesn't matter. I gotta focus on myself. One hundred percent. That's the only person that I'm trying to beat, really. 100%. And he had Tracy McGrady in his competition. He has Vince Ooh, Carter in his sights. Nice. You know, then LeBron came along. All these other guys came along. Didn't care. Didn't care that they were flashier, stronger, faster, bigger. Doesn't matter. I'm Kobe fucking Bryant. Like, I'm gonna get mine. You know, that's He's that's what it is. I'm gonna beat 100%. myself. And you can't outwork me because I'm already the hardest working person on the court, right? Mm-hmm. But I, I love that quote for sure. Well, you're already here. Share us yeah. your favorite quote. Man. Uh, mine has always been, you know, so as, as like a, someone who gravitates towards leadership, mine is to inspire. So that's what Kobe's like. I got a direct quote, actually. I, I don't want to, you know. No, no, yeah, no, dude, I want you to get it right. I was like, please, man, please, that, please get it right. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So this is a quote from the late and great Kobe Bryant. The most important thing is to try and inspire people so that they can be great in whatever they want to do. Right? It's not about, mm. let me motivate you to be great in basketball. It's, what do you want to do? Right? Let me help you. Let me inspire you. Let me give you that same motivation that I have. And then you take it. You run away with it. Right? And if you run out of motivation, because we all run out of it at some point. Right? Yeah, Come back to me. Right? I can energize you again. And I've always seen that as like the best mantra to carry out throughout my life. Whether it's, you know, with friends, whether it's family, whether it's my employees. doesn't matter. Right? Like, let me give you a part of me. And then use that. Use that energy. You got my faith in you, right? Whatever your journey is, it doesn't matter. You don't have to follow me. You just got to figure out what your journey is, and I'll be there. I'll root. I'll, you know, I'll root for you the entire way. I'll inspire you as you need it. So I think that's the one quote that's always been like stuck with me, and I've actually like exemplified throughout my entire life, at least. Yeah, I think uh, for me, I, I really love that part of it, right? Because it like so well plays in the mind. But you know, so for me, like with my journey and all, putting that on Instagram, like a lot of Kobe. Uh, you know, it's the cool thing now to like Kobe, right? Because everybody loves to share the roses and all that yeah. stuff. But there was a point in time where Kobe was not the most popular player Absolutely. in the league, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Always got Absolutely. like the negativity, oh, you know, yeah. whatever, whatever. Selfish, He's, the chucker, yeah, the unpopular yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah of course, the, most, the asshole, yeah, yeah. Right. everything. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Right. So you hear all this stuff. So my favorite quote is, everything negative, pressure, challenges, and all, is all an opportunity for me to Number rise. three. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> just crossed this shit off his list. Yeah. like, fuck it. Nah. Yeah. You might as well just go to the like fifth page of Google. I only have four weeks left. me. Well, tell us what that means to you. I, I think for me, man, it's just like, you know, when I was trying to put it out there, you know, my, my main goal was to inspire, you know, and I really just wanted to put it out there to be like, just at the simplest, like, hey, if Amir could do it, then I could probably do this shit too, mm-hmm. right? And just inspire that forward. But not everybody gets that message. To some people, uh, it comes across as like, uh, like a false bravado, they don't really yeah. get what you're trying to do, comes across as kind of braggadocious, so there's like a whole negative side of it. Well, Kobe dealt with that shit too. Exactly. Like, yeah. it's not it's not unique to you, it's unique to the Kobe mentality. Right. It's like, I'm exactly. trying to help, and right. if you if you come in a place from openness and open-heartedness, you'll understand that I'm trying yeah. to help. Well, and if that's just like, not you, then you just not... negatively, you will take it negatively. Right. Exactly, but it's like, if that's not you, then you're just not ready for that level. It's totally okay. And I was like MJ in the last dance, like, and so then he said, so I took that shit personally. <laughs> like screenshotting, making names, like I'm gonna prove this motherfucker wrong. Yeah. Cause really at the end of the day, my journey started with fuck my friends, I'm gonna prove them wrong. Yeah. I'm gonna lose the weight and I'm gonna make them watch that's it. And that's how it started. And then it grew and then I was like, oh shit, I didn't really know what I signed myself up for. Yeah. Way, right? Yeah. So then you get this whole different side of negativity and all that stuff and you're like, oh shit. So learning to cope with that, learning to just be the best version of yourself and just learning that Kobe didn't go from Froby number eight to the Mamba over like one season, right? Of course not. It yeah. took a, like a long period of growth, change, consistency, 
like just every day trying to get better and just really living that that's what got him from the eight to the assassin of the number 24. Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm going to read my favorite quote and I'm, I'm going to, to do my best. <laughs> hey, it's right here. So you, you should have cheated and read my notes, I but can't see that it is <laughs> those times. I've been trying. Yeah. You ready? <laughs> those times when you get up early and you work <clears throat> hard, those times yeah, when you good. stay up late and you work hard, those times when you don't feel like working, you're too tired. You don't want to push yourself, but you do it anyway. That is the actual dream. That's the dream. It's not the destination, it's the journey. And if you guys can understand that, then what you'll see happen is you won't accomplish your dreams. Your dreams won't come true. Something greater will. And to me, what that means is obviously one, work your ass off. Man. I got chills. Yeah, no, I did I too. Got it. I did read that it. That was so yeah, that was no, perfect. It's I like, got chills just hearing like, that again. Yeah, for me it's like work hard, duh. We know this about Kobe. That's that's not that's not something special, but there were times where Kobe didn't get the MVP. He didn't get the ring. He didn't get the credit that he deserved. He was hated on. He didn't get everything that he wanted every mm-hmm. single time. He wanted it. Shit, he came out and wanted to be a fucking G and missed airball three straight shots. Yep. But the work, the work proved to Come be back. something else. Yep. Exactly. Yep. And apply that to my daily life, to our daily life, to you listeners' daily life, to better understand that you may not accomplish your dreams but you will gain something. You may not know what that thing is right now, well, yeah. but you will gain something that will pay itself off eventually. Mm-hmm. And like, I, like Kobe has talked about, it may not happen now. You may not get that instant gratification that you want, that you're looking for, but it will show itself in some way, shape, or form. And in that moment, you'll smile and go, well, fuck, I guess it happened. Yep. I guess it worked out for me. Yep. And that's what that shit means to me. Yep. And that's the most beautiful part, right? Like, You see the results no matter yeah. what. Right, people. We all get this idea of like, I have to do these three steps to get to like this one goal. I wish it was that easy. But then you stay stuck on step two, and you're just like, I'm a failure. I'm a failure, and your head starts to get, you know, like filled with all these negative thoughts, and you don't even realize that that time that you're spending in that step two, man, the goal that you had in mind was so small compared to what you're gonna achieve once you finish all these things, and then you get to it finally, and it's just like, what was I worried about? And that's exactly what Kobe, right? Like he could have gone for MVPs. You know, he could have stat chased. He could have done all these things. He could have been a likable guy. But that's not what that's mattered. That's the biggest one, yeah. Right? That's not what mattered. But he knew his end goal. Yeah, but Kobe focused on the right thing, right? He never yeah. questioned the the results. He always put his his uh, his real attention just into the efforts, right? Because a lot of people will look at why am I not getting the results, right? Like, for example, I want to be the next Kobe. Like, okay, are you going to wake up at 4.30 in the morning? Yeah, Is yeah, your nutrition yeah. going to be on point? Yeah, yeah. Like, you want 100% of his results. You also have to match 100% of his efforts. No doubt. Yeah. And he always understood that from the beginning. If you're going to question the results, first question your efforts. Yeah, Absolutely. So. And I mean, look, talking about your weight loss journey, and well, Hodge, you had one too. It's like we, on the other side of Instagram, we see the, the weight loss, mm-hmm. but we may not see the work that goes into it, oh, the yeah. food, the waking up, right. the consistency, the going to the gym. So for me, it's like I go to the gym for a week and I'm like, no, fuck out. Like it's not happening like it did for Amir Wahaj. Yeah. And yeah. it's like, because I didn't see the struggle, the hard, the, the shit that you guys had to deal with behind mm-hmm. it is not translated to the rest of us. And, and that's why Kobe says, if you understand that, then what you will achieve is much greater than the original goal that you have set. Exactly. To quote Drake, Bitch, you wasn't with me shooting in the gym. I'm thinking, well, Drake might have taken that. Direct Kobe <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'm pretty sure Drake took that from the Kobe mantra. Yeah. But you're right. You're absolutely right. Case, get in here, man. Come on, get in this fest. All right, number three. <laughs> <laughs> Is, can I jump over two or three guys like I used to? No. Am I as fast as I used to be? No. But I still have the fundamentals and the smarts. That's what enables me to still be a dominant player. As a kid growing up, I never skipped steps. I always worked on fundamentals because I know athleticism is fleeting. What's that mean to you, Doug? Tell us. Don't miss the simple shit. Like, you can't hit a home run every time you go up to bat. Not every shot's going to fall. You have to work your way towards knowing when you're going to hit it or knowing you can't hit it. Yep. Or people just overcomplicate shit, man. A lot of, yeah, you're right. A lot of the time, dude. Yeah. Overthinking it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, even, like, in terms of fitness, people are like, oh, I got to buy this supplement. I got to do this. I got to get the surgery. It's like... Dude, just watch what you eat, be healthy, and be consistent. That's it. Literally, we were just talking about it earlier <laughs> yeah. today, right? It's like, give one piece of advice. It's like, simple. Read that. Like, read don't the damn label. Read. Yeah. That's it. Damn label. Like, read the label. Do one thing. Do, Do one, one thing. thing. Yep. Right? And then figure out if you want to integrate more steps into it, right? Kobe worked on free throws. I mean, this man would not leave until he had 100 straight. You know, I've tried that so many times. 100 I got, straight? I've tried. Jeez. I've tried. I got yeah. to seven at the highest. And then I, like, I missed one. It's like, 
Start back again. I ended up being in the gym for three hours. I had to go home, bro. Like that, that's how bad it was. If I had to do that, bitch, I would still be shooting. Like, I would still be shooting. Like, I, would, I would have never graduated. Never done never done I had to go home, bro. I had like, a free throw shooter. Yeah. I am. Shaq looks good, man. <laughs> oh man, that's what I'm saying, bro. Like you, you take that one simple thing because no one's at the free throw line. No one's gonna guard you at the free throw line, right? But it's about making sure that that stroke is perfect. Mm-hmm. That my shooting form is on lock, you know. And then how do you translate? It doesn't matter if I'm 35 feet out or if I'm two feet away. Mm-hmm. That shot's going to go in because that form, the hand knows. I worked on it, you know? And that's all you did. Take that one thing. Make it so good that your foundation is perfect. Then, whatever you want to throw on top of it. You want to throw in some shakes. You want to throw in some pump fakes. Yeah. Whatever you want to do, right? And you can apply that to life, you know? Whether it's I mean, you guys did. Life. You yeah. guys did. Literally, for you guys and many of us, you, the first day to wake up at 5 is really hard. The second day is really hard. Eventually, you're beating your alarm. Yeah. Eventually, it's like, oh, I'm here at 449, 459, whatever, right? I'm ready because my mind, I've trained my mind to do it. Exactly. And that's what Kobe taught us. It's, it's a big part of Kobe. The attention to detail Correct. matters so, so, so much. Absolutely. So jumping a little bit outside of the philosophy of Kobe, one thing he valued a lot was his attention to detail in his sneakers, right? We've talked about Jordan sneakers on an episode a few episodes ago with, yeah. with beloved guests of ours, good friends of the show. But today we're going to talk about Kobe sneakers, something that I think all of us have grown up admiring, loving, spending maybe a little too much money on at times, from, you know, here and there. That's an understatement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but let's, Kobe put so much detail in each of his iterations of his shoes, oh, yeah. whether it be with Adidas or Nike, and even, you know, now. He's gone and they still, they know what they're doing. They know the Kobe mentality of what he would expect from his sneakers. You guys talk to me about your favorite Kobe sneaker. Let's go. Let's go. Maybe colorway. Let's go style. And then if there's a story, let, tell me the story. I want to know what's behind just that sneaker. Uh, for, I mean, there's only one right answer. You're a hype. Here. No, I'm just no, kidding. I'm just no, kidding. I'm just dude, kidding. Come on. I'm just kidding. The Kobe Six Grinch is the Ooh, only right Kobe answer. Six is my favorite. To the, to this question, there's only one correct answer. Like I, I don't care what you guys have to say. The Christmas <laughs> colorways are always the best, especially when it comes to Kobe's shoes. Uh, I mean, like, come on. And I mean, just like on Christmas, Kobe playing the Grinch. I mean, who better? Like Kobe to come steal Christmas. Because I mean, like they play every year. Uh, it's what you look forward to. And I mean, the colorway, the green with the red laces. Come on, classic. That's a awesome. great. You you told us a story about the Grinches and, and your and your you almost plight to try to get them. You want to tell us the story? Yeah. I think it was very interesting. It was entertaining. Yeah. So I had the Kobe cheetahs, you know, and being a little overzealous, I was like, oh, maybe now I'll get the Grinches, right? So. Uh, you know, I decided that I was going to do a meetup on one of these sneaker groups and, you know, all is fine and dandy and the next thing you know, <laughs> I get robbed and I neither oh, have... Oh, for the cheetahs. Yeah. Oh, Bro, he took the cheetahs off my feet and, oh, then, yeah. and then he didn't even have the Grinch. Oh, then he had the feet. Yeah. Yeah. What, price, what price were you trying to get him for? Bro, they were like 600 I was like, yeah, okay. for Grinches, that's yeah, really, yeah, really yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. For very good. near yeah, dead yeah, stock, that was actually really, really good. Bucks now. Yeah, look them up on stock yeah, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah, they're going high. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah they're not I got so a bit out there, but it's not. But, but yeah, it's I was going from lower. two Kobe's to Nobis. So. <laughs> 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 oh, you want to jump in here, bro? Uh, so for me, it was definitely my Kobe 8s that I got over there. So that was after my first job and like my first real paycheck that I got. I was like, it's my birthday gift. You know, I want to treat myself right. And obviously, being a Laker fan, a Kobe fan, I was like, this feels right to me. So I got them customized. My initials are on there and everything like that. Oh, nice. uh, but so I guess Nike ID Kobe's. Yeah, Nike ID Kobe's. Yeah, okay. I had to make it mine. You know? yeah, that's, I love, dude, that's I love the man, but I had to make it mine, right? Yeah. He told me not to follow. It's my yeah. thing. I got to be me right. at the end absolutely. of the day, right? So I, the reason I love it is that it's the you know low profile. It's fast. It's sleek. It's tight to the, like, perfect for everything that I want to do, you know? Uh, Kobe actually did an analysis, actually, at one point, where I think his Kobe 11s before they came out, and I think he shaved off, like, what, maybe, I think, a twelfth of an inch or something like that on one of his shoes because he realized it would make him faster, yeah. you know? It yeah, would improve his speed. Detail. Attention, to attention to detail. Literally that much. Like, he's talking about, to us, it would be nothing. Absolutely. But he went ham, and he just, like, researched. It was like, I need to make sure that I'm that fast. So if I had to pick, obviously, I'm going to pick my Kobe 8s just because they're mine. You know, that's my memorabilia. You want to explain to the listeners what colorway you went with on these Kobe? Oh yeah, so they can so understand. I got a nice uh, dark purple, like you know, body with the blue, uh, kind of like soul game right there, with a little bit of orange dots, and then uh, the red check. You know, I had to get the red check. Keep so the red laces yeah. as well. Yeah, they're, exactly. they're, they're sweet, and they're yours. That's the most important thing. That's the most you're important thing. Right. For me. 
I, uh, um, so speaking, I'm, I'm glad I had this because I had sent this to my, these were the sixes that I did the IDs on. So uh, this was when I, this, this was my first pair of Kobe's, the sixes, because again, it has the, the reptiles, the reptile design on it. And that again, emulates, you know, him and his personality and his characteristics. But uh, this one will always, this doesn't fit me anymore. This is a size nine. I don't know why I got him that small. <laughs> this shit don't fit me no more, but it's just there and it's always going to stay there. But my favorite ones to, um, so I got, I put them into three categories one is to like rock and just like wear and I'll never probably hoop in them is the 11s. Mm -hmm. The 11s are just so sexy. The tinkers, the black horses with the gum bottoms. And then um, the 10s I like a lot because they're so comfortable. I think that's when he had, they, they had stretched out the zoom at the bottom so that when you're standing and you're playing, you're running, you can actually run in those shoes, which yeah. is so nice. And then the ones that, um, that I permanently put on ice is uh, the uh, the Kobe NX3 uh, NXT 360s that we're talking yes. about. Those are just so lightweight. I mean, you can literally take out the sole and the whole shoe just bends. You can just bend in whatever. But uh, I think his shoes were better when he was playing than after the fact. And besides the NXT, because he had the the ones with the shroud. Yeah. That was I don't know what that was. And then he had the AD. Yeah. That was AD. ugly too. But and like I said, respect respect him when he was playing because all the shoes that he played in were phenomenal. Especially yeah, the last game. But those NXT three sixties are the most comfortable hoop shoes Absolutely. I've ever so tried like, Oh yeah, so like yeah, so nice. So for me, it's a little more nostalgic, so it might not be the right answer, but it's my answer. The Kobe three, literally I try to look up the name, it's just white and black. <laughs> That's the name of the shoe, believe it or not. The Kobe three, white and black. It was the first basketball shoe that I could convince my dad was worth $120 at the time. Very expensive. And I was like, look, I really want it. I really want it. And he was like, if I get this, you better like genuinely wear it and enjoy it. And I told him, I was like, dad, I promise you that I will. And I wore those until there was a hole in the bottom. Those are my genuine hoop shoes to this day. Still my favorite. Uh, mostly because of nostalgia. They were comfortable. They felt right. And, and it was just, it was genuinely, every time I put them on, I don't know, the superpower of Kobe, when you lace them up, just kind of flies through your body. Yeah, that's and that's what yeah. that shoe did to yeah, me. Absolutely. And I'm sure it did it to all of you guys too. Yeah, that's why that shoe meant what it did to me. All right, I got to go with the Kobe sixes again, the Venomenon. Oh, good shoe. Like good shoe. Gold, white bottom, yep. black shoes. Yeah. And then it had the little sock lace thing up top. Mm -hmm. I love it. My first pair of basketball shoes still have to this day. Still wear them sometimes, but they don't have that much grip in them anymore. But you know what? I think we're at a good place to listen to a word from our sponsors. And yeah, absolutely. We'll start up in about 30 seconds, guys. Sounds good. And we're back. So, obviously, we've talked about it in the past throughout this podcast. Kobe's inspired so many individuals in so many different walks of life, but obviously his primary walk of life was basketball. Mm -hmm. And so in that same vein, let's kind of get an answer from all of you guys on who you think has done a... Not perfect because it's almost impossible, right? Mm -hmm. But has tried his best or her best to emulate Mama Mentality and Kobe Bryant in their game of basketball. Who is the most Kobe-like player in y'all's opinion? Man, there's so many answers to go with just because there's there's various aspects of Kobe, right? And I think all the players in the league, you know, you can look at the superstar level, right? And then kind of like that <coughs> second tier of superstar, they all have aspects of it, like a percentage, but it's nothing beyond. I wouldn't say like higher than thirty percent of it, right? So I think for me, the person that really takes the cake above all of them would probably be Damian Lillard. You know, the guy is a very good answer. He works hard, you can see it from the get-go, you know? Like, he never stops fighting. I mean, that's why it's Dame time, right? Like, he knows to, to like, take that shot against Paul George, who's a phenomenal defender, right? Oh, yeah. It's like, just know that I'm gonna pull up from like, what, five, six feet away from three-point line. 43 and feet. 43 feet, exactly. And so, and call it game. After that, that Wave takes some by. serious what the got pointed, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's some Kobe level shit, you know. So I, above all else, I have to give it Damian. Lynn. The guy doesn't talk too much. He focuses on his craft. That's all Kobe did. He didn't give a crap about like what people were saying about him. He he trash talked. He hella trash talked, right? But he backed it up every single time with the wins and everything, right? The work ethic all combined. I think Dame does that perfectly, you know. That's why the Trailblazers are such a force. Even though they might not have like the perfect supporting cast throughout all these years, they've been a force. I think they're scary because team to play every always, time you play them. Yeah, oh, never. because Dame. Because exactly. Dame, you have to right. I mean, Dame. That's a really good choice, and and he came into the league as virtually nobody exactly. as well, right? And it's like he everything he has done has been completely earned. Nothing has been given to Dame. Yep. I think it's a fantastic choice. I mean, did you want to jump in here? Uh, you know, it's 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 hard. You know, it, it's of course. Uh, you, 
really, it, he, Kobe isn't comparable, but you said yeah, there's certain attributes that you could probably think about. Uh, and I, Russell Westbrook, just because of his intensity, you know, I if, if I look mm-hmm. at when other players played Kobe Bryant, they were just scared shitless. They're like, oh, damn. Like, like fuck, we're going against Kobe Bryant. I think uh, Russell Westbrook has that same, you know, tenacity about himself, too, is that when you get on the court, you see Russell Westbrook. Even, like, when I see him play, I'm like, yeah. oh, this is, he's a beast. I'll do how scary he is. And he has that after about him where he just, I think, tells himself that, hey, look, I've worked hard. You know, I mean, I, I don't follow Russell Westbrook like that, but I just know that I see his game, and I know that he's put in that work to make his game that good. So he's probably the uh, probably the mo- the first player that comes to mind. Another one is our hometown uh, ice tray man. Come on, yeah. You know he's 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 putting, he's putting in work too. So I think uh, that's cute. No. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> I, I like I like him. I don't have a tenacity. Look, 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 guys, it's, <laughs> it's an opinion based question for a reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so I, I like him. I like him because again, you know, he he she shows up. He shows out. Um, he has he has a lot of he has a lot of development to do. But I, I like you know what we talked about in the beginning is that the cojones to take that shot. You know, I see, I see him putting that work to really, you know, be on the map for Atlanta, um, and and I think he has a long way to go. He has a lot of, you know, a lot of game left in him too. So let's see what happens. Absolutely, I think like Dame, like Russ is also good. I I don't think I can pull out a moment in which I felt like Russ didn't give a hundred and ten percent every time he steps on the for basketball sure. court. He has fallen short time and time again in his career, mm-hmm. but it's never been because Russ did try hard enough, did because he didn't work hard enough. You fall flat sometimes. Kobe yeah. did too. MJ has in the past too. It's, it's not it's not just. You know, so I think Russ Dane, very good choices. Two of my choices as well. Um, but before I go ahead, Amir, come on. So apparently this is the unpopular opinion here. Can I but guess? It's got to be Kevin Durant. No, it's Giannis. Huh? It's no, Giannis. no. So ironically, you guys talked about hitting a big shot, right? Uh-huh. You guys talked about what is Kobe known for? The skill set and for being one of the most like polarizing figures. So it's Kyrie Irving, actually. So um, Kyrie Irving, and you, that. That like, you talked, chosen one, though. I mean, you yeah. talked about Dame's shot, right? Yeah. For example, like that's cool to do it in the playoffs, but to do it in the finals against the Warriors, yeah. so with Le- and you took the shot with LeBron on the court, yeah. like that's yeah, yeah. that shows you something. So oh, those cojones, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. that is probably the single most clutch shot in finals history, arguably, arguably. I don't know. Rayon's pretty good. It's, it's up there. It's but, up, yeah, but it is it's up Europe's It is up there. I'll give you masked Kyrie Irving. No, mass Kyrie, <laughs> and, and I'll go. I'll go beyond that. You talked about Kobe never uh, backed down from a challenge. When they were on Team USA, Kyrie bet Kobe to play him one on one. He did. Catch yeah. money. He did. Yeah, he did. He, did. Yeah. he went directly to the man yeah, and said, "I will say. take you out, and yeah. I will put money on that shit." Yeah, yeah, so yeah, for yeah. me, it's Kyrie. But honorable mention to Jason Tatum because Jason Tatum really played a lot okay, under yeah. under Kobe. The skill set, the footwork, the post work. Yeah. Honorable mention. Okay. Case, you want to get in here? Taking my shit. <laughs> All right. Well, my backup was based on just hard work itself, Jimmy Butler. Ooh. See, that was oh, my pick. That was my pick too. Dog, yeah. dog, that's how we are. That. Yeah, Jimmy Butler is a fucking great pick. It's yeah. all hard work, and literally when they flew in through Orlando before their first practice, he was in the gym at four, trained for like two and a half, three hours, showered, ate, and came back to practice at night. I mean, look, the most Jimmy Butler shit you could hear is that somebody filed a noise complaint because he was dribbling his yeah. ball in his no, room. No, he was lifting Orlando. weights. Was, yeah, and it was so it's like, I mean, that's some, that's some crazy when, shit. When Trey Young called game, and then Jimmy Butler and the Heat came back. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then okay. he said, yeah, yeah you're right, yeah, the game yeah. was over. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I, got, I got to stop letting you guys go first because you guys keep, keep taking my <laughs> answers, like Case. So my literally my three answers were Dame, Russ, and Jimmy Butler. <laughs> and, and truly all three of them, like Waj and, and Amin has talked about, emulate Kobe in different ways. Yep. We agree, and Kobe, everybody says there's never going to be another Kobe. And by the way, Kobe himself wasn't looking for another Kobe. He said, sure. I don't want to be the next yeah, MJ, yeah. so why would I want to make the next guy the next yeah, Kobe? Yeah. No, you be your own thing. You become great because you're great. But those three guys, Jimmy Butler, when he was on the Minnesota Timberwolves, played the third stringers and beat... Played with the third stringers. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. Right? And beat the starters 21-2. to two. That's, some, that's, some, and that's some Kobe that's shit. That's, that's, that's the most Kobe points. shit I've ever that's like, Kobe read about shit. any other person. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. ridiculous, man. Yeah. Russell Westbrook didn't have a good team, averaged a triple-double, became the MVP of the league. Yep. Yeah. Right? Dave twice. waved off, Dave waved twice. off an twice. entire twice. franchise by himself, exactly. right? So those three guys... The franchise like, are two superstars. Yeah, well, yeah, absolutely. Superstars. You're absolutely right. Yeah. So, like... Those three guys emulate Kobe well. Kyrie is also a good pick. Yeah, you're right. It's an unpopular pick. But you're right. Even in Boston, when shit wasn't going right, he wasn't afraid to be the guy that talked about shit that wasn't going right. So yeah. you're right. I think these are all great picks. And and it makes sense because they all have talked about at some point or another in their careers that Kobe was a factor in how they became the way that they are. So it's not at all surprising that those guys emulate him in, in your perspective. So I think that's fantastic. Let's go to something that's a little harder. 
to talk about. The whole reason why we're doing this podcast is it's been six months since the Mamba has left us. Mm-hmm. And, and I know it might be a little hard, but we're going to try to truck through it together. Talk to me about January 26th. You get the news. Where were you? What happened? How'd you feel? Let's talk about what it felt like to lose one of the greatest influences on us and many others. I think... So I've never really like expressed emotion much, you know. Shout out to brown parents. <laughs> <laughs> but um, like I, honestly, I didn't believe the news just because you hear all this fake news. Like we heard that from TMZ. TMZ we heard from TMZ. Right? Like, not a credible source, right? Um, I was literally sleeping. I remember like sleeping. That was one of my days. And I'm gonna like sleep in, wake up late. I'm gonna have some pancakes. It's gonna be a good day, right? And literally, my little brother comes from downstairs. He runs up the stairs ASAP. He's like, "Bye," like you know. Kobe died. I was like, that's absolute bullshit. Like, yeah. He's probably just, you know, messing with me. So then I started getting on Google. And I'm like, wait, there's some credible yeah. sources not coming out. Twitter's in a frenzy, you know? Facebook's in a frenzy. Instagram's going in a frenzy. I was like, this is, like, maybe I'm still sleeping, honestly, you know, because I was pretty tired from the day before. I was like, how, like, that doesn't make sense. How can Kobe even die, you know? Mm-hmm. It was like, we all know Father Time will catch up to everyone. We know the Grim Reaper is going to come after all of us. But, like, Kobe? Like, even the Grim Reaper is scared of Kobe. Like, he has to be, you know? Like, that's how, you know, fierce he is. And so just to, like, wrestle with that concept, like, this is something bigger. That this guy is bigger than the whole world, if I had to, you know, put him in my, like, how I see him in my mind, at least. To reconcile with his death is almost, like, it doesn't make sense. You know, the math doesn't add up. So the whole time, like, I'm in denial and then slowly it started to like set in. And I remember I had, I had to go to like an event, uh, a friend's event actually, and they never seen me like break down or anything, but I actually like broke down for the first time and I just, I needed time alone. Like, I needed time away from everything. So I shut my phone off, everything like that. Um, it was, I don't know, I think unbelievable is the only way I can put it then, and, like then and even today, to say that, you know, that this episode is gonna come out like the six month mark. like. In my heart, in my mind, I feel like Kobe's still, like, out there. I don't there. believe it. You know, like, exactly. Like, he's in our hearts. Like, he's still motivating us. Like, we're here talking about him. You know, I feel even more motivated just, like, speaking about him today. Yeah. So, I don't know. It, it was, it's a tough, tough thing to see such a, you know, monument to yeah. my entire life, really. Like, I, you know, principled myself after him. And it's, now that he's gone, just, like, part of me, like, is also gone, you know? Yeah. So. For me, I mean, he was an icon. He was immortal. And that day he became mortal, right? As every Kobe fan has been through the playoff losses, the struggles, the the comebacks, right? Like Kobe always comes back in the end. He always saves the day, right? So you're you're almost expecting him to be like, yeah, and then Kobe took over the helicopter and landed it safely, right? Like that's almost what I was expecting. Like just to be completely honest, because that is the most Kobe thing to happen in that situation, right? And so for that to happen to him, like it really makes you like come to terms with your own mortality. Right. And it starts to make you think like, am I really using my time as best as I possibly could be? Because one thing that you can say, you can say whatever you want about Kobe, that man used his like time on this earth, probably the most efficiently, like Oscar nominated. I mean, think about how long it took Leo DiCaprio to get an Oscar. This man did it in his first try. Leo got a pity Oscar. He did get a pity Oscar. (laughs) Another conversation for another time. But regardless, Kobe did it. Right. He stepped into somebody else's field and he said, no, I'm going to master this shit, too. Right. So for me, uh, I remember I was driving and I almost like swerved off the road because I was like, what the fuck? Like and then it's from TMZ. So you're like, oh, is this real? Is this not? And then it goes on these group chats and it's on Twitter, Instagram. All these athletes are posting their favorite Kobe pictures. And then it really starts to set in. And then you start to come to the terms with it. And then the second news breaks that. Oh yeah, by the way, his daughter Gianna is also in there. Yeah, that was the hardest part. And then you go through it all over again, but it's like so much worse because you know, for as long as you've known Kobe, his family and his outside life means so much to him. Especially his daughter, right? Like, his daughter was not into basketball. All of a sudden, she got into basketball, and that was the whole reason why everything was happening, right? How the, the, like, whole course of history changed because she picked up a basketball, right? And just getting those moments of seeing those pictures with Trey Young... And getting to see, like, all those moments, like, it was crazy. And to this day, like, it doesn't feel real. Um, but the only thing that I can really say or what's really helped me come to terms with it is, is again, 
let his legacy live on through your daily actions. Mm-hmm. Continue the mom mentality. Absolutely. You know, it's it's definitely never easy to cope with, and I don't think it ever will be. Six months, six years, however long, like an immortal became mortal. I mean, coping through it was definitely one of the. Um, uh, thank God YouTube exists because I was just reminiscing on all the YouTube videos that I could find of Kobe. Like I went through so much like repetitive videos and it, and just still like I would just have it on lock. Like even at nighttime uh, when I would sleep, my wife would be like, like, "What are you watching?" She knew that I'm watching Kobe. We weren't even here in the states when uh, when it happened. We were over. Shice and I were taking our vacation and uh, we found out um, and not, it was it was it was in, we were in Paris and and no one around us had the same mutual feeling, right? Like. We didn't have anyone to connect with other than each other, and we were in a mindset about obviously we were unplugged. You know, we were unwinding. We were just wanting to make sure that and that that the tenseness really kicked in for the next two days. We were still there for another week, and that week was just uh, you know she kept checking in on me like, hey, are you okay? Like, is you know, uh, my sister called me uh, and after my mom is not a huge basketball fan, but she knows that I love Kobe. And then as soon as my sister told my mom, my mom checked in on me. She's like, oh, did you hear about this? Like, what happened? She wanted to find out more details. So. You know, it was one of those things where uh, uh, I think my my family also learned about uh, about what Kobe Bryant meant to me as well, right? Uh, one of the first things that I did uh, after when he passed away was, you know, again going through YouTube. Thank God that we had there's so many beautiful videos of him, him and his him and his daughter playing basketball together, then training each other. So you see that beauty, and you and right now I still just get like like I'm getting just goosebumps talking about it right now because it's just one of those things where you watch it and you watch the beauty of them and she, like you said she didn't you know his daughter you know did she didn't want to play basketball or she that, it wasn't a passion for her. but as soon as Kobe saw that he put in so much effort even on the helicopter uh, uh, he was texting for one of the teammates about getting her an internship or something like his his you know he was always about you know selfless about himself and. You know, the only thing that I could that I can kind of say at this point is, you know, uh, you know, thank God that he, you know, that he touched so many lives because people could still talk about him. People still remember what he's done, and he was so important to the game, not only with just us, you know, people that aren't professional basketball players, but also the professional basketball players know exactly how they how he changed their lives in in the game that they play today. So I mean, it's. Um, like I said, it's still unbelievable. You know, yeah. any 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 kind of emotion doesn't justify at this point. But it's just yeah, I think yeah, it's I definitely I, I feel a sense a, an energy shift just talking about this right yeah. now just between the five of us. But um, that was some sad stuff, you know. Yeah, I mean, we spent so many debates defending him, right? Like the Kobe yeah. versus LeBron, like, yeah, just so many different oh, yeah. things. So like, you always had to invest so much into him. So to lose him, it's hard. You got it. So for me. Um, we are at a family lunch, my brother, my mom, my dad, and uh, my extended family at, uh, at a restaurant, and, and my friend Nabil calls, and he goes, hey, did, did you hear that Kobe died? And I go, D- no. What? Come on. Look it up, TMZ. Don't believe that shit. Come on. A few minutes go by, like you guys talked about, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, credible sources start jumping in, the LA Times. It becomes real. And, uh, and I got up, I got up from the table and I, I had to go to the restroom. I had to have a moment. I get there and I'm like, yo, I'm good. I'm good. I didn't even know the guy. I never met him once. And my brother came to the restroom. He said, you good? I said, yeah, I'm fine. He gave me a hug and I let it out. It was over. I was crying a lot. It was hard. He was everything to me. He was everything to so many. You know, I, I'm not special. He was everything to so many people. And he, you could tell he had so much more to give to all of us, to the rest of the world, to himself, to his family. It was hard. It was really hard losing him. Yeah, I can't they say, disagree. Yeah, they say you die three times. You die when you physically die. You die when the last person you love and know dies. And you die for the last time when your name or memory is uttered for the very last time. And that's why Kobe is timeless to me. Mm-hmm. Every time you shoot a trash, a piece of trash into mm-hmm. a, a garbage can, you'll say Kobe. Kobe. All the time. You know, every time you think of, oh, this guy's really good at basketball, you'll compare him to Kobe. Yeah. Every time you see the color purple or gold or even think of the city of Los Angeles or even the state of California, yeah, think of you'll think of yeah, Kobe. Kobe. Yeah. And you'll reminisce. 
and you'll tell your kids about them and you'll hope they understand you'll try we'll all try our best because he's not here to do it for us anymore that was one of the hardest things I had to reconcile is I always imagined taking my kid to like a Laker game you know and ho- just hope that maybe Kobe would be in the audience that day so I could literally just you know oh just point out visualizing <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, yeah. exactly I could just you know tap my kid on the shoulder and be like you see that guy right there that's why I am the way I am. Like that's how your dad got to be the way he is because of what he instilled in me, like the work ethic and everything like that, you know. And that would be like Kobe handing me the skills that I need in life, and then me handing that to my kid, you know. I'd always imagine that, like, because I could never afford to go to LA when I was young, when I watched him when he was still playing. Um, thankfully, I got to see him play his last game at you know in Atlanta. Yeah. So that was honestly such a beautiful thing to at least see him play once in my life, but never having seen him play at Staples Center, I wanted to like honor him at his home, you know, and not even being able to go to LA considering everything that you know followed suit in the world, like that that was really really hard. And I think that's why maybe even to this day it hasn't like I haven't fully reconciled with it. You know, I, I haven't really fully accepted that he's gone because, like like you said, you go to LA and that's. Like that's Kobe. Like that's his it, city. You know? yeah. it's, it's home. It's Kobe's home. And so, I mean, that's, that's one of the hardest things is knowing that I won't be able to, like, share that, pass it on. But, you know, for as long as we live, you know, no matter what happens, no matter if we flip teams, mm-hmm. new players come, new legends come, new superstars come, Kobe's, you know, shirt will always be at Staples. We'll always have his championship videos. We'll always have all the other videos of him being a father, a husband, you know, just a great man in general to, so, like, live with us and pass it down to the next generation as well. Yeah, I should have gone first. I can't follow that. <laughs> I was actually playing basketball when I found out. Uh, we are at Central Park every Sunday morning, play from 10 to 4. And we're playing, and this kid just yells, Kobe died. And you just hear the ball stop dribbling. Everyone's looking around like, what the fuck are you talking about? No, it didn't. And then everyone runs to their phone. I'm talking, there's 35 people playing on three different courts. Everyone runs to their phone. And I don't think anyone shot a ball after that. One of the first things I did was call him. Because I know how much Kobe meant to him. He shot me a text earlier, but I didn't have my phone. And it's something that I still haven't dealt with. I don't think I ever will. But yeah, man. Yeah, I think for me, you know, my parents uh, moved from Pakistan to Chicago in 1985, right? So my dad got to have Michael Jordan, right? Mm-hmm. And he still has Michael Jordan, right? So to have that generation and then along comes Kobe, right? And then to have that for myself because he wasn't really mine. I wasn't old enough to like know and like really see him and all that. So I got that with Kobe, right? And, um, you know, to, to see him go and to think that like, you know, the next generation, like my kids, etc., like they won't get that same blessing. And, and that's the thing is that you realize some of these players in the league, right? LeBron, James Harden, uh, all these unicorns and uh, like KD, like all these players in the league, we got to appreciate them now. Right. Mm-hmm. It's, it's far too often that we give people their roses when it's too late. Yeah. Right. And like, that's the thing is that like, as much as I love seeing Kobe get all the respect, I've been a Kobe fan for as long as I can remember. And I'm sure you guys have that too. Not everybody felt this way about Kobe. No. And part of me, when this happened, I was really salty, and I wanted to start calling people out, because I'm like, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Keep your same energy, go back to liking LeBron. You know exactly. what I mean? But at the same time, it's like, you know what? If he's going to get his respect somehow, some way, let him have it. Right? He's, he's oh, earned it. Yeah. Who am I? Yeah, right? I who, who am I to be that guy? Because I, I have no jurisdiction. Yeah. I'm not a Bryant. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, he gets to decide what it is. And so at the end of the day... Um, just seeing the next generation and seeing Kobe go and at least I can say at the end of the day, you know, like he impacted my life and I'll do the best that I can to pay that forward. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, after he passed, a few days went by <clears throat> and, uh, and Alexa, my girlfriend and I were talking and I said, I wanted to do something to, to remember him by, to, to remind myself of this, of this human that it impacted my life so very much and, and I wanted to remember him. And so we came up with the idea, funny enough, to get this tattoo. I got I gotta have an 824 tattoo right here on my bicep for those watching on YouTube. Um, and the reason, sorry, yeah, and yeah. the reason I did it was, it it was more to remind myself 
that Kobe would expect better from me every day. Mm -hmm. To not let a day go by in which I cannot look back and be proud of what I have accomplished that day. And that's a really, really hard thing to commit to. It's really hard to ask yourself to be better than yourself yesterday, every day. And, and I cannot say in the last six months that I've done that every day. I haven't. I don't think anybody has. I just imagine like Kobe gift where he's shaking his head and he's so soft. <laughs> soft. So every time I want to like skip leg day or whatever the case may be, I'll just soft. soft. You know, the, the yeah, the day you don't wake up for the workout, the day you wake up a little soft. late because we're all working from home, <laughs> you know, or you kind of clock yeah. out a little early. Yeah. That's all I think is just like, man, like, I'm a Laker fan. I'm a Kobe yeah. guy. Like, yeah. I can't stop. I, like, I got to work harder. I got to do it more just because the circumstances have changed of life. Doesn't mean Kobe would be like, well, it's okay to call it a day, yeah. you know? It's like, no, figure out what the next best way, figure out how, like, what works for you. How do you evolve? How do you get better, yeah. right? Because the world's going to go on. The world's going to do its thing. It's going to succumb. It's going to, you know, go on a lackluster tilt, sort of like, you know, everything's okay. We're all in quarantine. I was like, well, Kobe would never do that. He'd still be in the gym. He'd find a way. Whatever yeah. his craft was at, at this point, he'd find a way, you know, whether it's taking time for the kids and the wife, you know? He'd figure out a way to make everything work for his favor, mm -hmm. not go by what the world is telling him to do. You know? Yeah. Yeah. With with um. Well, I mean, look, this podcast was incepted after Kobe had died because I, I asked myself, I said, why am I why am I and Katie's and Shaba and Nabil and my brother Tabish, why are we not doing this thing? Mm -hmm. It's because I'm worried about the opinions of other people. Fuck that shit. Let's do it because we love it because we want to. That's why you lost the weight. It's why you commit to every craft that you do. Because you expect better from yourself, but even almost more so, Kobe expects better from you, you know? And, and, and this podcast today is a bit almost selfish of me to put it together. It's because I needed to talk to guys who understood my love and my passion at another level. It was almost, it's cathartic in a way to get to talk about someone who we don't have around anymore, who we cannot, who I'll never get to meet, who I'll never get to shake his hand or, or thank him personally. But I, but I still can, and we still can, by, by making the mentality an everyday asset, and everything mm -hmm. that we do, Absolutely. and everything that we try. Because it's what I would want from myself, but it's also what I've learned from Kobe would expect from me. And that's the only way he'll continue to live on, because of us. Us five, you guys listening at home, the Kobe fans, even the new ones who gave <laughs> him his roses after his, le his yeah, death. Yeah. Look. I had to say I had a very similar struggle. I'm sure you guys have had a similar struggle too, where all of a sudden the, all these Kobe fans come out of nowhere. What the fuck were you doing yeah. for 20 years? Yeah, my mom. Right. <laughs> I just came out of respect, but you know. But but for me it was, like like Amr said, who am I, to tell you how to feel about shit? Yeah. I yeah. appreciate that you're willing to adjust and be open and understand, the greatness even if it is too late. Because in all reality, it's not too late. Right. Kobe will live on forever, mm -hmm. truly forever. One of the few humans whose memory and name will be uttered long long after his physical passing Agreed. he's here with Absolutely. us every day every Agreed. single day Agreed. and that's right. why yeah I mean, he might be gone but he's he's right here in our hearts you never know? forgotten and that's that's what i feel like we're doing right here right now just like reminiscing about an old friend that's passed you know yeah and we'll do that a couple more times throughout our entire life you know and i i just know that for sure because you don't forget 20 years he gives 20 years that's a long, long time, you know? Mm -hmm. You're not just going to forget about that within six months or six yeah. years or 60 years even, right? Um, so I think that's, that's the best part is like having people like this, having other Kobe fans and even new Kobe fans who are just watching his highlights now. So they're so excited. It's fresh for them for some reason, you know? So yeah. they come to you with that excitement. I was like, hey, did you see this? This is like, I remember watching that live. I remember <laughs> that feeling that I had, you yeah. know? Like I remember just like that game seven moment, you know, when he sit, jumps, I was like, I know where I was. I remember what I was wearing. I was like, let me take mm -hmm. you through what I felt, you know? Like the heart was racing, you know, that nervous sweat. Are we going to win? Are we not going to win? It's coming down to the wire. All those moments of Kobe, you know? Like they'll continue to live on and new people will kind of like, hey, have you heard about this, this, and this, you know? So I'm looking forward to the new memories, but I'm also looking forward to <coughs> reminiscing with, you know, the people that have been there throughout time, you know? Yeah. Right. So I think that's the best way of like, it does, like, just like you said, it's cathartic, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So I think that's the... It's an exercise know, for ourselves. Exactly. Yeah. It's an exercise for ourselves. Yeah. Absolutely. Heroes come and go, but legends, legends are forever. Yeah. Yep. So, 
let's kind of, I guess, get out our feelings for a bit yeah. and, and kind of lighten the mood. <laughs> something, that was something crazy, we, man. That yeah. was crazy. Hey, yeah. man, that's, that's what we're here to do here yeah. at the Waterboy Equipment. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> brought the waterworks yeah. today. <laughs> hey, that was, hey, you know what? We try. We try. We try really hard. But something we all grew up with was the Kobe, LeBron, MJ, I guess debate. Debate probably is the best word we can assign it to. Mm-hmm. And, and I think it took a really long time I'm going to touch on it earlier, is to appreciate the greats while we still have them. It took a long time. I grew up, like many of you guys grew up, a LeBron hater. I was like, he's not better than Kobe. Same. He's not. 100%. He's yeah. not Kobe. I used to fucking argue that MJ wasn't better than Kobe. I'm sure you guys have at some point in your lives too. Like, I yeah. will still argue. Yeah, and yeah. so it's like. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo, y'all know where to find me. You know, Water boy manager yeah. on Twitter. <laughs> at Captain America, what's up? <laughs> you know, so we grew up with that, with that debate. And and my favorite thing to say was you remember, you guys remember that two thousand you know eight nine ten year where it was like the Kobe Lebron commercials with Nike with the puppets and with the puppets, and, when, yeah, yeah. and I would love to tell Lebron fans I go look Kobe held his end of the bargain he was in the finals two years in a row where was your guy where was your guy Absolutely. he held he said I'll meet you in the finals and he held his end up of the bargain so talk to us about what it was like growing up and making a very difficult debate. And, and honestly, if it was it was hard, right? It's got to be hard it's a lot to debate of headaches, that. Bro. It's a lot. Oh, a lot of headaches. A lot of a lot of temple rubbing. Oh yeah. To get through. That. Talk to me about kind of that 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 you know struggle within yourself a little bit. I mean, we talk about the rings. I mean, that was the easiest thing that that we anybody could say in terms of what LeBron has, LeBron hasn't done, right? As he hasn't been able to finish, right? And again, he had a phenomenal support I don't say a phenomenal supporting cast I want to say he had a he had a decent supporting cast where again with, with what Kobe accomplished he did have Shaq right but again I don't think Shaq has won well actually Shaq has won one room without Kobe but again Kobe's cast members I think weren't as good as LeBron's cast members hey others and, would argue and, otherwise yeah yeah so so even so he, the, the case that the case that I would always make is that I think LeBron when he came into it I think he was Way too overhyped as him as a player, even though he, even though I mean he was a stellar basketball player, but he couldn't finish. And Kobe was finishing at the time, so it was a very easy case to rest where you just say, "Hey, look, you know, look at the rings, right? Who has the rings right now?" And and then now I think going to it now him being a Laker is I, I'm a, a little bit more ex- accepting because LeBron has gone through that journey. I think he's learned a lot of things along the way, and I think he's also he knows what it what it feels like to be a champion and what responsibility that also comes with it as well, right? I think Kobe knew right away after winning his first three rings the responsibility that he had and what he had to do next, right? It wasn't it wasn't that this third ring that he won, it was over, right? Then you lose Shaq, what do you do next, right? Can you go ahead and capitalize? Because then you're in doubt, right? Yeah. So when LeBron was doubted, he left, right? He left and went to he went to Miami. So, you know, I had cases that I could make or that were very easy and I could like pick pocket, you know, like a few things that I could say about LeBron. But at the end of the day, you know, um, Amr just said it really, you know, really, really well is that, you know, give the roses now because it's one of those things where uh, I think LeBron is a, a phenomenal athlete. No one compares in the league to him right now. I mean, he, he's, he's getting it done. He's, he, he's making players better around him. And I really, do, I really do for the legacy of the Lakers and Kobe's legacy and the relationship that they had towards that final stretch uh, as soon as uh, LeBron became a Laker that he wins that ring. And I think for whatever reason – the, that mama mentality, the spirit of Kobe is going to play on that Lakers team. That's what I think is going to happen. It's that Kobe's going to be on that court, and you and I and I know as soon as I start seeing some of the games, like I'm going to be like, damn, Kobe's fucking there. Like he's there. There's no way LeBron's doing this shit on his own. And that's what's going. And and I think is the fact that I'm thinking like that. I'm more accepting of LeBron. Uh, he's on the team, so I can't hate on him now because you know, it, being a Kobe fan, you are a Lakers fan, and if if they're on the Lakers, you support them, right? And oh, yeah. We've had some shit players on the Lakers, and we still support the Lakers. Right? We're like, fuck, like, hey man, but like, hey, it's okay, it's on Lakers, I'll figure it out, <laughs> right? So that but, was the argument every time. It's the Lakers, we'll get it together. Yeah, it's like we'll it's just a matter of when, not it's a matter of when. So yeah. I mean, that's my two cents about the whole LeBron Kobe relationship. But yeah, it started off pretty rocky. It was always, it was, you're right, a headache to have a conversation with anybody because uh, he was, he was, he was, uh, he was the next truth right he was the, he proclaimed himself as a king everyone else did as well but everyone forgot that Kobe was still in the league at that time right and you can't you can't you know pass on the baton until Kobe says he wants to pass on the baton exactly mm-hmm. I think for me I'll leave MJ out of the conversation just because I never watched it live right I didn't feel the emotions highlights are one thing but when you watch that game when you're going through it minute by minute it's a different feeling altogether right so I've done that with LeBron I've done that with uh, Kobe I think 
up until that point where he won as a Cavs player, I was very anti LeBron. I, I hate him. We can argue what ifs about that series against Golden State. You know, if so and so hadn't gotten technical and whatnot and blah 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 blah. But as a Kobe fan, he doesn't deal in what ifs, so I don't deal in what what ifs, right? That's true. We take the technicality for what it is. The game is supposed to be played regardless, right? So I think at that point, LeBron finally got past that barrier that Kobe's been on the other side of yeah. for years. You know, he was always pushing up against greatness, mm-hmm. but rallying that three one team. You know, like giving it all, and I saw that. You know, I like I felt it almost. Like I felt him running down the court to block that shot by Iggy. You know, mm-hmm. I felt what he had in him. Like, if I don't do this, then nothing I've ever done in life matters. You know, I felt that in that chase down block, and that's exactly what he did. Trusting that moment, just like Kobe did. Trusting Artest, trusting Kyrie. It's like you got that last shot. You know, I fully have you with it. Right. So understanding that perfect balance of takeover versus give it up when I need to. I think he perfected that balance at that point, you know? In the previous days on the Heat, even though he won, I think he won because he had D-Wade to 100%. carry that balance for, for him. Like, D-Wade was a lot more finely tuned. But LeBron developed it in himself after that Cavs win. And so at that point, now that he's come to the Lakers, and I, I mean, not just me, but a lot of my friends even are like, we're just waiting for LeBron to go off in the playoffs because we know he knows where it is and he just has to put on the suit. Just give me the jersey and I'll turn that dial up to 11 just like Kobe would. You know, regular season was whatever. We stopped playing for a couple of months. It was whatever. But I've always been locked in. I just need to turn it on. Yeah. You know, so now I would say he's hit that threshold that Kobe's always been at. It just took him a little bit longer to get there. Yeah. That's yeah, all. Agree. Yeah, well, well, you said. found two of the nicest Kobe fans. <laughs> like, I don't think I've ever met such, like, polite Kobe fans about this particular question. I think you split us up very well. Yeah, look, in, in all fairness, so. Kobe fans have a history of being um, passionate. Yeah. Passionate. I mean, that's one way to phrase that. Sure, yeah. Would you go ahead, give us a I mean, is no one going to actually rank? Like, uh, like, wasn't the question to no, rank? I, I didn't no, no one's going to rank. I didn't ask you guys to oh, rank. I didn't, I didn't, okay. rank. I, I didn't ask okay. you guys to rank it. Okay, I was going to say, why look, are we running away look, from ranking? Here, 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 here's the thing, right? Here, here's the reason why I didn't ask any of you to rank. This is a Kobe podcast. I have Kobe yeah. fans. <laughs> who, 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 who the fuck do you yeah, think yeah, I'm yeah, 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 listen, listen, listener at home. Kobe, if I, Kobe, Kobe, if Kobe, I had, Kobe, yeah. Yeah. yeah, listener at home. If I had to ask Bro, you what Kobe, all these guys would choose, Kobe. you could probably guess who they would choose. So ranking to him and them would almost be worthless I mean, to an extent. Do you want the ranking? One A Kobe, one B Jordan, two Lebron. <laughs> oh, really? I, I, I second that. Retweet. I had 2010 Kobe, and then I had 2003 Kobe, and then 2007 Kobe. <laughs> You know, yeah. Mount Rushmore is just Kobe with four just different Kobe, facial expressions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and different hairstyles. Four different hairstyles. Yeah. Four different hairstyles. Yeah. 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 I remember defending him on so many, like, school bus rides and, you know, Kobe versus LeBron, Kobe versus LeBron. As I got older, I realized, like, the influence that MJ had on Kobe, especially watching The Last Dance. You just watch so many different little videos and little tidbits, and you're like, whoa, that's Kobe. And you you see where he gets it from, and that makes me respect MJ more, right? Uh, Just because of my love for Kobe overall. I just say, like, the comparisons for me died when Kobe did. You know, like the whole ranking system, all that stuff. I'm like, you know what? Okay, we'll separate that apart and we'll just appreciate them for what they are. LeBron is the single most skilled basketball player of all time, right? Like overall, like most well-rounded, hands down, right? Um, Kobe, the best finisher. Like, and and for me, why I say that you guys are the nicest Kobe fans is because I have no faith in LeBron at the end of the game. Seriously, I would rather AD or anyone else. I still don't. Yeah, I like, will take. Alex especially Caruso if it's a free throw. The only throw. reason I said it is because this year is different. Because this year is different. different. That's the only thing. If no, this no, year this... wasn't, if if, if 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 the way the situation didn't accumulate and LeBron being on the team, I would hundred undoubtedly <laughs> yeah. say he can never finish. But the fact that Kobe has Kobe's passed away, this year, that's and, why. and the, yeah, the pressure's too high. For the pressure. Oh yeah, this, exactly. Because if he fails now, he. But that's what worries me. I, I've been on the other side of watching down. LeBron yeah. collapse. And, yeah. and, no, and, so, I, and I feel that too. So everyone listening at home, I want to make sure that you understand, this is an opinion-based podcast, <laughs> yeah. and we don't all see eye to eye on this topic, no, but that's the beauty of us being able to discuss yeah, it, right? So, so for me, 
I, I love this as like I, a I, LeBron scenario. <laughs> yeah. It always happens with him. When you bring up LeBron and Kobe together, yeah. this is always what It happens. always happens, right? But so for me, I think that, like you guys, I grew up hating LeBron. LeBron was not Kobe. LeBron was never going to be Kobe. He was never going to be the GOAT or even close or t- whatever. And then I think something at some point around 2014 or 15, something just clicked in me and I, I decided that I wasn't going to do that shit anymore. Because... I think I got to an age and a mindset in which Kobe's words of don't compare me to MJ, I want to be the next Kobe, actually made sense to me. Until then, it didn't. I was just like, okay, that makes sense. Cool. Little, you know, 20-year-old kid, whatever. Yeah, I get it. Whatever. Fuck it. And then it just made sense. Why not appreciate these guys for who they are for as long as they are? Because like Kobe in 2015, they will retire one day. And I don't want to give him his roses to LeBron or whoever after the fact. It's why I don't love that KD went to Golden State, but I get it to an extent. I don't love that he did what he did, but I'm not going to tell the man where to work. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. If you leave your job and go to a better job because you like it and you have more fun there and it's better pay or your employees or your employer or your employees or your coworkers are just better, I'm not going to fault you, Amin, for doing that or Wahaj for doing that. So yeah. how, I don't love that he did it. Yeah. But he had more fun. Accumulated more success. Who am I to talk shit? And that clicked, and I go, okay, then hating LeBron going to Miami, probably not so fair. If I can't give KD shit, I probably shouldn't give LeBron shit. I don't have to love it in order to understand it. And that's where I was on that whole topic. And so for me, it's not important about who's better. It's about what what is in your heart. Who influences you more? who you fuck with, who you vibe with, who you look up to, who influences and trains you to become a better version of yourself. And that could be LeBron. It could be Kobe. It could be MJ. It could be Katie or Kyrie or Dame or Russ or Trey Young or any of these guys. It could be. And it's within your heart to decide that for yourself. I don't care who you love. My only caveat is that you respect Kobe and put him in your top 10. After that, I don't give a fuck where you put top him. Top five. I don't, that, again, I'm talking about me. I'm talking about my person. At personality. Kenny the Jet Smith. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, that's, that's my only caveat that respect a man enough to keep him in your top 10. I don't give a shit where you put him. But he's got to be in your top 10. After that, I'm not going to argue with you. Yeah. As long as you give him the respect he deserves, the rest of it ain't up to me. All right, boys. So moving on, we're going to have our last segment before we call it a pod. It's going to be called, <laughs> Whose Line Is It Anyway? Okay. And, uh, and basically, it's copyrighted. a game. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. maybe not. We'll find out. But, um, but the way we're going to do it is it's a game, and I'm going to read you. There's going to be two parts. So the first part will be quotes that Kobe has said about another player. Mm-hmm. And you guys have to guess who he's talking about. If it gets hard, I'll give you hints. And then the second portion, I'll let you know when we get there, but it will be quotes that others have said about Kobe, and who that person is is who you guys have to guess. Cool? Okay, sounds good. All right, boys, let's get into it. So, Armour, you can't cheat, so I'm going to hold it nice and close to me. Looking that way. <laughs> cool. Bad video podcast. All right, the first quote is, anyone crazy enough to fuck with me is crazy enough to play with me. Matt Who was Kobe talking about? Test. Matt Barnes. Hell yeah, that was, that was a good Barnes. guess. Damn, you didn't no, get that the was, That was the, the fake. Yeah, 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 it, was. yeah, yeah fake. it was. Kobe said this directly to Matt Barnes when he asked, if Matt Barnes would like to be a Laker. Yeah. In free agency. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That was a damn quick guess. Give him like a yeah. half a second. Give the listener a half a second. No. Nope. He's like, fuck it. Yeah. He's no, like, no, I'm no, no, mama no. mentality. I'm not losing. Sure. Sure. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, it's going to get a little harder. Ready? Not this one. This one's pretty easy. Without him, there is no me. Who's Kobe talking about? MJ. 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 Absolutely. All right. Now it's going to get harder. I always wish if I had one player to play with, it's this guy. He could do everything that I could do. But he was taller. When I talk to kids about that, it's what I tell them. They always ask, who is the hardest player that I've had to defend? And it's pretty easy. It was this guy. Tate he could do place. everything I could do. Tracy, Tracy McGrady. Tracy McGrady. Tracy McGrady. Yeah, yeah, I, I should have made these harder. That, that, that was going to be the ad. I uh, made these too easy. Come on. All right. <clears throat> He's part of the family, right? So whatever he needs, I got him. When I came here, Magic did the same for me. Kareem did the same for me and all the other guys. It's part of a community now. 
So anything he needs on my end, I'm there for him LeBron, and his family. LeBron, LeBron. LeBron James. And it's all LeBron love. James. I'm really, LeBron, really come on, excited. come on, man. We got it. LeBron, Let's go LeBron James. James. So the reason why I did that one is for those of you who still can't accept LeBron in the Laker jersey, get the fuck over it, Kobe has. Yeah, yeah. Get absolutely. the fuck over it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. He's going to carry us. and We absolutely. need him to, otherwise we won't succeed either. Yeah, absolutely. exactly. All right, this is segment two. Where, Co- uh, where Kobe is speaking about... Sorry, other guys speaking are about speaking Kobe. about Kobe. Kobe. You have to guess who that guy is. All right? He passed me the ball. He never passes me the ball. <laughs> Ron Artest. Queen's Bridge. Better World Peace. <laughs> Queen's Bridge. <laughs> Better World Peace, baby. All right, all right. Now it actually gets harder, okay? That's what you said last time. <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, these are actually yeah. kind of hard, okay? Kobe can play in any league. I'm going to slap him for you, Kobe. Yes, Kobe can play in this league. He would be dominant here just like he was in the league. Lamar Odom. Nope. Ooh, that's Who a else? Tough one. Yeah, I told you it's gonna get harder. Say it again. Say it again. Okay. Kobe can play in any league. Kobe, I'm gonna slap him for you. Yes, Kobe can play in this league. Kobe would be dominant here, just like he was in the league. Man, who made? One. Who said that quote about Kobe? Magic Johnson. Nope. Is no, it no. Dirk? Dirk? Nope. It is, it, is it a Spaniard? It's a different sport. I feel. Yeah, is it Powell? No, is it, it is. It is also no. It is a basketball player. It is, is an American basketball oh, player American, okay. that played in a different basketball league that's not the NBA. That's also in America. Oh shit! Someone in China then. Nope. No. Here in America. It's American. Pat Beverly. Nope. No, it's an American player who played overseas. No, no, no. It's an American player who played in, in a league here in America. Oh, oh, the Big Three League. Yeah, the, yeah. The big, oh, the big three shit. League. Who was it? Who was it? Steven Jackson. Jackson. Yes, it's Steven, Steven Jackson. Jackson. Oh, yeah. There you go. Jackson. See, I told you it's going to get harder. Yeah. Y'all didn't believe me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> if, if he gets going, you won't be able to stop him at all. This could be a lot of people. But, this, is, but this one specific guy had one very specific Kobe moment happen to him. That really fucked him up. Oh, Jalen Rose. Yeah, it's oh, Jalen Rose. 81. Yep, they had 81, 81 point game. Yep. yep. Okay. He's probably the only guy, and Roger can probably attest to this as well, the only guy that I competed against in my 14-year NBA career that when I would come into the game, I was low-key scared. Tony the Allen. reason why is Kobe was the type of player that was going to try to kill you from the first minute of play all the way until the final buzzer went off. And I'll give you a couple Allen. seconds. If you can't get it, I will give you hints because this one is actually really hard. It's not Tony Allen. No. Is it Richard Jefferson? No. No, not Richard Jefferson. This guy, this guy, as, as said in the quote, 14 year NBA career has one ring. Kevin Garnett? Nope. Matt and here, Barnes. And here, nope. I wouldn't do Matt Barnes twice. Paul Pierce? Nope. I and, Paul and I will give you the hint that will probably give it away. He was known very specifically for wearing a very unique thing while he played basketball. And only while he played basketball. Oh, Alex Iverson. Nope. Uh, oh, wait, only while he played Prince, uh, Prince, right? Nope. Penny Hardaway. Nope. Come on, guys. What do you mean when he wore, wore a unique? He wore a very unique thing while playing only basketball. He wouldn't wear this thing outside of the court, but he would wear it what on the court. What a unique thing? I can't tell you. If I told you, <laughs> you know. Come on, if man. I told you what the unique thing was, you'd know the answer, I promise I'm you. struggle on this one. This one ring, 14-year career, really good shooter. They uh, beat the Lakers when they were going for the fourth straight. I thought it was Tayshawn Prince. No, nope. Ray Allen. It's another guy on his team though. Rip Hamilton. Nope. Rip Hamilton. Rip, Rip, Hamilton. Rip Hamilton is the answer. Oh, the mask. Yeah. That's what. Oh, 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 I thought it was Tayshawn Prince. That's, that's the real thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm over here thinking about like an arm yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I thought that was a mask. Motherfucker. That is the most 2020 shit to throw in here. To wear a fucking mask. Yeah. So that's why I made it like I was like, all right, this is gonna throw you off, but I thought it was a good hint. And once you get in, you're like, it's one of those hints where you're like, oh, no, after you get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, we have I think two more. Uh, one more, one more. Okay. No, two more. I do feel, and I've said this before, the last couple of years with LeBron, when he became the best player in our game, that Kobe Bryant is the greatest player of our era. The Kobe Bryants aren't around no more. They're good young players, but there will never be another Kobe. So every opportunity you get to face him, you want to seize that moment. Kyrie. Nope. D-Wade. 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 That's a great guess. Damn, shit. You really pulled that one off. All right, last one. Yeah, I didn't read that shit. So. I know. I believe you. You're making. I'm looking right over there. Yeah, you, Kobe would be disappointed. If you <laughs> no, 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 yeah, yeah, I won't. You'd be fine. Anything All right. to win, bro. Last one, please. Anything to win. You're not cheating. You're not, not trying. Cheating. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last one. Last one. I was always a huge Kobe fan. When I get home at like 11 p.m., I know the fourth quarter was just about to start in L.A., so I'd sit down and I'd watch him, basically will his team to win with some incredible shots. To me. He's the number one player over the 15 years I have been in this league. You just close. 
Larry Bird. No. It's definitely not a West Coast player, if that wasn't already that's, understood. That's why I said Larry yeah, Bird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nope. This guy recently retired 20 years in the Vince, league. Vince Carter. Nope. Another guy that recently retired 20 Wade. years in the league. Uh, Wade? Oh, nope. Oh, yeah. Uh, Wade. 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 Uh, 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 Come on. Come on, you guys got this. Right, give me a Tim hint. Did you, did you guess? Tim what did Duncan. you guess? I thought Tim it was Duncan. Not Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan is a good I guess. I said Dirk Nowitzki. Oh, Dirk Nowitzki. I didn't hear you. That's Dirk why I was asking. Nowitzki. Dirk Nowitzki. So that, that was our game of Kobe quotes. Or I thought Hopefully. you said it wasn't a West guy. No, no, it wasn't, it wasn't a West Coast time. guy. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. West Coast. Western Conference guy. Sorry, ah. Sorry I, I didn't right, mean to okay. misunderstand it. But anyway, I mean, this is the end of the podcast. Thank you guys so much for coming on. Thank you. It truly has been a pleasure to have all of you. And and honestly, thank you, listener, for listening. If you made it this far, I appreciate everything and your support. Oh, yeah. Hopefully you enjoyed the Shoot the Shit podcast. And and before we sign off, thank you, Kobe. We miss Kobe, you. Kobe. Kobe. Kobe.